Energia Russian Energia Energia Energy Grau 11K25 was a Soviet rocket that was designed by NPO Energia to serve as a heavy lift partially recoverable launch system for a variety of payloads including the Buran spacecraft Control system main developer enterprise was the Kartron NPO Electropribor the Energia used four strap-on boosters each powered by a four-chamber Rode 170 engine burning kerosene, LOX, and a central core stage with four one-chamber Rode 0120-11D122 engines fueled by liquid hydrogen, LOX. The launch system had two functionally different operational variants, Energia Polyus, the initial test configuration in which the Polyus system was used as a final stage to put the payload into orbit, and Energia Buran, in which the Buran spacecraft was the payload and the source of the orbit insertion impulse. The rocket had the capacity to place about 100 tons in low Earth orbit, up to 20 tons to geostationary orbit and up to 32 tons via translunar trajectory into lunar orbit. The rocket made just two flights to orbit, one each in 1987 and 1988. Topic: History Topic Launches Topic Development Work on the Energia Buran system began in 1976 after the decision was made to cancel the unsuccessful N1 rocket. The cancelled N-1 rocket-based manned lunar launch facilities and infrastructure were used for Energia notably the huge horizontal assembly building, just as NASA reused infrastructure designed for the Saturn V in the Space Shuttle program. Energia also replaced the Vulcan concept, which was a design based on the Proton rocket family and using the same hypergolic propellants, but much larger and more powerful. The Vulcan designation was later given to a variation of the Energia which has eight boosters and multiple stages. The Energia was designed to launch the Soviet Buran reusable shuttle, and for that reason was designed to carry its payload mounted on the side of the stack, rather than on the top, as is done with other launch vehicles. Design of the Energia Buran system assumed that the booster could be used without the Buran orbiter. As a heavy lift cargo launch vehicle, this configuration was originally given the name Buran T. This configuration required the addition of an upper stage to perform the final orbital insertion. The first launch of the Energia was in the configuration of a heavy launch vehicle, with the large Polyus military satellite as a payload, however Polyus failed to correctly perform the orbital insertion. Due to the termination of the Buran program the Energia program was concluded after only two launches, and further the payload on the first launch didn't perform the final boost properly. The legacy of Energia – Buran project manifests itself most visibly in form of the Rode 170 family of rocket engines, and the Zenit launcher, with the first stage roughly the same as one of the Energia first stage boosters. <laughs> first launch – Energia Polyus The Energia was first test launched on 15 May 1987, with the Polyus spacecraft as the payload. A FGB, functional cargo block, 
Engine section originally built as a cancelled mirror module was incorporated into the upper stage used to eject the payload into orbit, similarly to Buran and the U.S. Space Shuttle performing the final orbital insertion, since the planned Buran T upper stage had not yet progressed beyond the planning stage. The intended orbit was altitude 280 kilometers, 170 miles, inclination 64.6 degrees. The Soviets had originally announced that the launch was a successful suborbital test of the new Energia booster with a dummy payload, but some time later it was revealed that the flight had, in fact, been intended to orbit the Polyus. The two stages of the Energia launcher functioned as designed, but due to a software error in its attitude control system, Polyus's orbital insertion motor failed to inject the payload into orbit. Instead, the Polyus re-entered the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Second launch Energia Buran. The second flight, and the first one where payload successfully reached orbit, was launched on 15 November 1988. This mission launched the unmanned Soviet shuttle vehicle, Buran, at Apogee. The Buran spacecraft made a 66.7 meters per second burn to reach a final orbit of 251 kilometers by 263 kilometers. Topic. Discontinuation Production of Energia rockets ended with the fall of the Soviet Union and the end of the Buran shuttle project. Ever since, there have been persistent rumors of the renewal of production, but given the current political realities, that is highly unlikely. While the Energia is no longer in production, the Zenit boosters are still in production and in use. The four strap on liquid fuel boosters, which burned kerosene and liquid oxygen, were the basis of the Zenit rocket, which used the same engines. The engine is the four combustion chamber Rode 170. Its derivative, the Rode 171, is still used on the Zenit rocket. A half-size derivative of the engine, the two-chamber Rode 180, powers Lockheed Martin's Atlas V rocket, while the single-chamber derivative, the Rode 191, has been used to launch the Korean Nara-1 as a reduced-thrust variant named the Rode 151 and the Russian Angara rocket. The Rode 181, based on the Rode 191, is used on the Antares rocket. Topic. Revival In August 2016, plans were announced to develop a super heavy lift launch vehicle from existing Energia components instead of pushing the less powerful Angara A5V project. This would allow Russia to launch missions towards establishing a permanent moon base with simpler logistics, launching just one or two 80-160 ton super heavy rockets instead of four 40 ton Angara A5 versus implying quick sequence launches and multiple in orbit rendezvous. Topic. Variants. Three major design variants were conceptualized after the original configuration, each with vastly different payloads. <inaudible> Energia M The Energia M was an early 1990s design configuration, and the smallest of the three. 
The number of Zenit boosters was reduced from 4 to 2, and instead of four Rode 0120 engines in the core, it was to have had only one. It was designed to replace the Proton rocket, but lost a 1993 competition to the Angara rocket. Topic: <inaudible> Energia 2 Uragan. Energia 2, named Uragan (Russian: Uragan Hurricane), was a rocket design proposed to be fully reusable with the capability to land on a conventional airfield. Unlike the Energia Buran, which was planned to be semi-reusable like the U.S. Space Shuttle, the Uragan concept was to have allowed the complete recovery of all Buran – Energia elements, like the original, totally reusable orbiter – booster concept of the U.S. Shuttle. The Energia 2 core as proposed would be capable of re-entering and gliding to a landing. Topic. Vulcan Hercules The final never-built design concept was also the largest. With eight Zenit booster rockets and an Energia M core as the upper stage, the Vulcan, which was the same name of another Soviet heavy-lift rocket that was cancelled years earlier or Hercules which is the same name designated to the N1 rockets configuration was initially projected to launch up to 175 tons into orbit. The development of rocket carrier Vulcan and the refurbishment of the Energia launch pad for its launches was in progress in 1990-1993. But later on the work on this project was cancelled due to lack of funds and the collapse of the Soviet Union. See also Comparison of orbital launchers families Comparison of orbital launch systems <laughs>